Greetings in the wonderful name of Christ, the redeeming God of heaven and earth, the Lord Almighty. It's Wednesday in the Word time, and uh, I'm excited about this time. I'm excited about always uh, having opportunity to unite with other believers uh, in God's Word. God's Word is truly a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And the Word of God has made a difference in our life, and we all that are born again, we know what that is like. Uh, some of us, man, when we got hold to the Word of God, uh, uh, we forsook all to follow Jesus. That means we walked away from some things and situations, and even, <laughs> I have to tell the truth, we came out of some churches uh, whereby the Word of God was not being magnified, not to judge the people, uh, but we knew that we wanted the word of truth. We wanted God's word, uh, not just for the preacher to know it, but we wanted to know it for ourselves. We wanted to know how to get in our Bible and study the scriptures. We wanted to have understanding. We want to have revelation knowledge. And so it was the word of God that began to direct our lives. And we prayed and God began to tell us, okay, I want you to go here and go there. And, and you know, a lot of time when you obey God, everybody didn't jump up and shout especially if it was a traditional system whereby you know this is the home church and you know the home church I, I don't know what a home church is I believe we are in the house we're already in the home church when we're in the body of Christ it's his house well anyway that's another horse to ride but I'm not going to ride it today but I'm excited about the word of God it's Wednesday in the word time and we're going to pray and we're just going to have this devotional time that's all I'm sharing is going interacting with the word of God and I pray you are having a daily uh, bread experience with devotion that your devotional life have taken on new meaning and a new purpose you're not r jumping up in the morning rushing and you know in a hurry you're taking time to get in God's presence and interact with his word. Father, we thank you for this time that we have uh, in the word of God and, and for you to speak to our hearts, Father, for you to uh, build our faith and strengthen our faith, Father, through your word. I thank you for this time that you've given us uh, not only the word of truth, God, but you've given us the God of truth, Jesus Christ. He is the truth. Thank you for what he uh, has done and is doing in our lives and through our lives for the glory of your name. We ask that you bless our time together now, Father, uh, that it would be fruitful, enriching, edifying, enlightening, and that we might go out and do the work of an evangelist, that we may go out and, and share Christ with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are looking at Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm going to read verse 24 and 25, but today I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible, and I know these particular scriptures have probably become part of your faith library. Uh, you've meditated and memorized them. You can sing them in worship. You can speak them while you're driving along on the highway. That's how you want to get the word planted in your heart. But Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 from the Amplified Bible reads this way. And let us consider and give attentive, continuous care to watching over one another, studying how we may stir up, stimulate, and incite to love in helpful deeds and noble activities. Verse 25, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. The day approaching is the day of Christ's return. We are called to be diligent in our faith, and one way in being diligent is that we're faithful in encouraging other believers relative to the love of God and the work of God. And not only that, but also being an example to believers and assembling together, coming to church, gathering together with other believers. Now, this isn't man's rule or man's guideline. This is God's wisdom and God's instruction to those who claim to be his children. If he's our father, he gets to give us the direction and guidance that we need as a father and he is our heavenly father and so what he's instructing us to do we don't get to vote on it we don't get to decide well god i got another uh, uh opinion about it we have to say yes and amen 
for it is the word of God. Well, today I want you to uh, have a devotional time with me in the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah 55, go ahead and take your Bibles and, and turn there, Isaiah 55. And in Isaiah 55, we often, you know, familiar with a portion of it where it talks about God's thoughts versus our thoughts, God's ways versus our ways. But I want us to go a little further up in the context and look at exactly because what Isaiah is really uh, communicating to God's people is what the abundant life look like. And it's important that we understand the abundant life. John 10.10 10 is a very familiar scripture where Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And another translation say to the full or to the overflow. And so in Isaiah 55, I want to uh, begin with verse 1. The writer begins with this word ho, or, which really means to wait or listen. It's kind of like an, a, an alarm to give attention to what is about to be said. So it says, ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread in your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Now the writer here uses different metaphors in order to bring out spiritual insight. And he used this example of waters but not just waters but he said those who are thirst those who thirst come to the waters and and you who have no money come. we know he's talking about the saving grace of God the salvation of the Lord it's free it cannot be earned you cannot purchase it it is the gift of God. And so the prophet here is speaking prophetically concerning God's provision for his people. And not only does he make reference to this saving grace, but he talks about wine and milk and without money and all these things. And, 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 and he asks the question, why do, you, why do you spend your wages on things uh, that cannot satisfy? You know, that's when people don't have their priorities right. Because in order to desire spiritual things, they have to be a priority in your life. In order to desire the things that God desires for us, there has to be the Spirit of God stirring our hearts in that direction. The flesh does not desire the things of the Spirit. The human nature... The nature without the divine nature. And, and, and that's where the spirits of thirst come from. I'm, I'm thirsty for the things of God. I'm thirsty for spiritual things because God has placed the thirst on the inside. Of, this is not a thirst that you conjure up. This is not a thirst that comes just because in your mind you say, I'm going to begin to. But no, God placed this thirst on the inside of our heart when we become partakers of this divine nature. Matter of fact, over in, uh, 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 turn with me to first, now let's start at, he, uh, start at Ephesians. Ephesians uh, chapter one. Let's turn there real quick. I wanna water the word with the word. Good to get parallel scriptures that uh, can bring greater clarity on what we're talking about here. Isaiah talking about this, this spiritual uh, 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 provision that God has made available to us but we got to be thirsty for it. and then in, in Ephesians chapter 1 look at verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ notice past tense He's already blessed us with every spiritual. There are spiritual blessings 
that God has made available to those who thirst. For those who are hungry for righteousness. For those who are saying, God, I'm not going to waste my time trying to find satisfaction through the world system or the world order. I'm coming to the kingdom of God. And I'll find contentment. I'll find the peace. I'll find that inward uh, a calmness that only you can provide. So he says he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. But notice, they're in Christ. Hallelujah. you got to be in Christ to connect to these spiritual blessings. And then the apostle Peter, turn over to uh, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, Peter, he, he talks about uh, this divine nature that God has placed on inside. See, God hasn't asked us to do this in and of our own human uh, flesh. Again, the flesh doesn't desire spiritual things. Galatians chapter 5 tells us that the flesh wars against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. And until you learn how to uh, uh, yield to the spirit of God, how to sense the spirit, discern the spirit of God, and, and seek the spirit of God's direction, you're not going to be fully satisfied. And then in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, look at, verse number uh, 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 I read at verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So notice that the scriptures tells us here that God's divine power has been given to us. That, that divine power is what calls a spiritual thirst. That divine power is what calls us to desire the things of the spirit of God and of the kingdom of God. And say God has already given us this divine power and therefore we already have everything that pertains to life in God. You got everything you need to live for God already deposited on the inside of you. You've got the power you need. You've got the anointing. You've got the glory of God all already deposited in you through this divine power. So whatever Goliath come against your life, you're well able to overcome him because of what? The divine power. Great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And see, what has to happen is that we've got to, first of all, notice that he talks about that this, uh, that pertain to life and God through the knowledge of him. You got to have it through the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. You got to have it through the knowledge of God's word. Or oh, most of you know, boy, you've got the word of God now. And that word is like a two-edged sword. Glory to God. You able to speak that word out of your mouth. You're able to stir up that anointing by speaking forth God's word in your life. Hallelujah. You're not living in the uh, room of doom and gloom. You're not walking down the path of despair and hopelessness. You are the redeemed of the Lord. You're able to stand up and declare in the name of Jesus, I've already overcome this giant. I've already overcome this situation. I've already spoken to that mountain and I'm walking in victory. I've already received my victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes people say, well, I'm just a quiet person. And that's fine. That's fine. That's nothing wrong. But man, that time there's a radical anointing to come on you. And not when you with people, when you by yourself, you'll boldly begin to declare the word of God. You'll start praying when you're driving. Glory to God. You'll start praying out loud, confessing the word of God. Declaring what God has said, going on that job, not as one wondering how I'm going to make it today. I better get my cup of coffee because if I don't get my cup of coffee, I'm not going to be able to deal. No, no. You have a devotional time. You interact with the word of God. You get a scripture in your heart. You begin to declare that I am uh, 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 the redeemed of the Lord. I am a child of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Word of God get in your heart. Word of God come out of your mouth. 
And the Bible says through the knowledge of Jesus. You got to know. I'm giving you knowledge. I'm saying what the words say. And by which we have been given exceeding great and precious promises uh, 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 that through these you may be partakers of it. Man, thank God that through these precious promises. Boy, God has given us the promise of the Holy Spirit. That's precious. That. Hallelujah. Boy, I thank God for the book of Acts. When I first became born again, I was saved. I was born again. Glory to God. Romans 10, 9 and 10. I had confessed and believed and God had saved me. But I was still thirsty. I was still saying glory to God. I'm reading this Bible. I'm reading the book of Acts. And I'm seeing a Peter before the Holy Spirit came. Being kind of like, you know, a little coward, a little timid. You know, fear and, and all that. But man, after Peter received the infilling of the Holy Ghost, Peter stood up and preached a message. Over 3,000 people claimed to Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He spoke boldly the word of the Lord. And I read the book of Acts, reading the book, I say, God, I know you are not a respecter person. Just like you saved me, you will give me that power too. And I know you did the same thing. Man, religion will talk you out of the power. Yeah, religion will get you happy and make you feel good. And, and sometimes people get up and shout. And people, you know, because of lack of knowledge, they think just because somebody shout in religious church that that's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Man, sometimes people still be uh, uh, having whatever they had the night before, still working in their system. <laughs> but I'm just saying, when you got the Holy Ghost, he is not limited to a shout. He is a power, dudamus, dynamite on the inside of your heart of faith. And he is what calls your faith to be courageous faith, strong faith, bold faith. Faith that stands up and declare that I'm going to walk in the will of God for my life and I'm going to be a witness for the glory of God. Well, the Bible says he's given us all these precious promises. Oh, man, the Holy Spirit is a precious promise. The gifts of the Spirit, those are precious promises. Glory to God. The fruit of the Spirit, those are precious promises. All of these spiritual wonderful blessings that God has given his children all because we thirst. We came to the waters. We didn't buy it. Freely, we received it. And freely, we're willing to share it with others. So Isaiah opened up the abundant life, and the abundant life begins with a spiritual thirst. It begins with you desiring the things of God, and you begin to walk in the things of God. Then he goes on down, and uh, I'm going to come down to verse 6, because he says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. He's telling Israel what they got to do. What they got to do. They got to get back on course with God. They got to seek the Lord. They got to pray. They got to call on him. They got to turn away from some things. And they're going to return to the Lord. And I believe we're in an hour now where people know what it means to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to know what God's will is for your life. You want to know what God's will is for your church. So that's why the church and people pray and seek the Lord. They want God's will. I got a person right now. They called me and wanted me to be praying and stand in agreement about a major career decision that uh, others are really making relative to their career, but they want to make sure before they say amen to it and agree to it, whatever the outcome be, because he said that his prayer has been, God, if this is a door you want to keep open for me, I'm willing to serve the people, but if this is a door you're closing, I want to obey you. And so uh, I told him I would definitely pray, be praying with you because I know how important it is when you're seeking the Lord, you want God's will for your life. And there are different emotions that come and we identify some things and thoughts that come. That's part of seeking him. You're still in a human form. You're still in a human body. But thank God you got people in your inner circle that you know that God can pray and can uh, get before God and, and intercede in your behalf and you're praying. That's how, that's how you seek the Lord. And then he goes on and uh, man, and then he comes to verse 8. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain comes down from heaven and do not return there and water the earth and make it bring forth the bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Man, I know you have 
have lived your life. If you've been walking with God for a number of years, you've lived your life around this prophetic revelation here concerning how God operates and how God moves in the lives of those who follow him. And you are like me. We have prayed and, and asked God for certain things and things turn out another way, but we trust that he's sovereign and that his thoughts are higher than ours and his ways are higher than ours. And I don't know about you, but I yield my faith over to God. And sometimes I'll say, well, God, you know something I don't know and I'm going to trust you with this. But what I do know is I have the assurance that he's going to watch over his word and wherever he sent that word in my life, in my situation, it's going to prosper. It's going to have great fruit. I'm going to have great success from the word that God has spoken out relative to my life. Even the angels hearken unto the word of the Lord. Glory to God. You remember that time in the body of Christ when people thought people ministered about angels and, you know, Christian got excited about, you know, going to the uh, a grocery store and giving testimonies about, you know, I asked my ministering angels to get me a parking spot close to the place. Man, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I be monitoring my steps now. You get a certain age, you want to get some steps in. So sometimes I park a good uh, distance just to keep, keep my steps, get, get my exercise. But I'm just saying, yeah, God has given us ministering angels, a, a ministering spirits to minister in our behalf. Uh, but man, I tell you what, there's so much more they're doing for us that we don't even know about. So much more they're doing right for right now for you. Why? Because the Father has spoken a word relative to your life. Because heaven has responded to your prayers. And the moment you set your heart to pray, God released the answer. And all of a sudden, the enemy, because we're in a spirit uh, a world, darkness, the enemy is trying to come and war against that. But thank God that he sends reinforcement from heaven. He sent ministering angels to minister in your behalf, to war against those spirits in the spirit realm. And that's why you keep confessing what God said and declaring that I've already overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of my testimony. And so we see that, uh, and I know you're like me, I'm like, oh God, I thank you that you have sent a word from heaven. God, you have spoken something relative to my life, and I'm excited about it because you said that word will not return to you empty, but that word will accomplish everything you intended for it to do. So all I have to do is what? Stand in faith, receive the word of God, confess the word of God, sing the word of God, shout the word of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm getting excited because I get excited about the word of God. Man, it's beautiful when you can take the word of God and put it in a little melody. I'm not talking about singing at church and singing for people to hear it. But when you're by yourself singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Isn't that a sign he called in Ephesians chapter 5? That's a sign of being filled with the Spirit. When you're singing, making melody in your heart unto the Lord, speaking to one another in songs and spiritual hymns, hallelujah, being filled with the Holy Spirit, walking in submission, submitting yourself unto the Lord, all of those are witness of, of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he goes down in verse 12, he says, For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace, the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come of the cypress tree, and instead of the brow shall come of the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be caught. Notice how God said, when I send my word, when I speak that word, when I release that word out of heaven toward your life, it's not going to return to me void. It's going to accomplish what I intended for it to do. And get this. Look how your life is going to go forth. You're going to go forth with joy. Hallelujah. You're going to, go, you're going to get out of the presence of God full of joy. Why? Because you see, okay, God, you said that I'm going to go out with joy. I'm going to go out with joy. I'm not going out with, with, with grief and sorrow and pain. I'm going out into the world with joy. And when I go out with joy, oh man, the elements of the universe are going to begin to worship God. Boy, I tell you what, can you imagine? You rejoicing in the Lord, giving praise to God, and there go some trees around you. You can't see it in the natural, but according to this scripture, the trees are going to be singing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. The mountains and the hills, all of them going to burst. And know what? Everything is being done to bring glory to God. Everything is being done to bring glory to God. 
And, and he said what's going to happen is the blessings are going to manifest. Oh, you ain't going to have no curse on your life. I don't care how many enemies you have, and I don't care how many people waiting on something bad. They're going to keep waiting. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's not going to come to pass. But the blessings of God are going to be in your life. The favor of God is going to be over your life. And God says stuff going to come up in your life. Good stuff going to spring up. Favor just going to cause things to manifest in your life. And God said that it shall be to the Lord for a name. It's going to bring glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's what you want. You want, at the end of the day, you want to say, God, be glorified through this. Bring honor to your name. Hallelujah. That even if you experience in the valley of the shadow of death, don't feel no evil. God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. He prepares to take. Now, now that's not a, I know we use it at funerals, but man, that's a song for the living. That's a song for those who know God. That's a song for those who walk with God. That even if uh, they're under some type of uh, challenge in their life, God hasn't forsaken you. God hasn't abandoned you. In Hebrews 13 and 5, he said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord is your help. He's the one on your side. You're not to fear what man can do unto you. I want to encourage you today. Hallelujah. And as you begin your day and as you go forth in your day, begin to see when you walk out in the beauty of God's creation. Man, that beauty, that creation was designed to give glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything that created, God created was designed to bring glory to him. Well, I know you've been blessed by the word of God. You've been refreshed by it. Hallelujah. You've been stirred up. You've been excited to a love and good deeds. That's what the word of God does. I want to thank you for uh, joining me in Wednesday in the word. And uh, uh, we're getting ready to prepare our hearts to transition over into a new year. I want to pray for you before I leave today. I just sense the leading to pray over you uh, before I leave today. Father, in the name of Jesus, you watch over your word to perform it. Your word is life to us and health to all our flesh. Your word give understanding even unto the simple, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus, those who are united with me around this word, around this table of truth that has been hearing the word of God, I pray, God, for an anointing of boldness on the inside of their hearts. I pray for an anointing of courage to spring up in them, Father, and that they are declaring that they are the head and not the tail today. They're declaring that if God be for me, what can be against me? They're speaking forth, God, those things that they have already petitioned you, those prayers and intercessions they've made even in behalf of others, Lord, loved ones, friends, things that's going on in the world, their intercession, their prayers. Oh, dear God, I pray that they will be encouraged to know that the ears of the Lord are open to the prayers, to the cry of the righteous. And God, you hear their cry, you hear their prayer, you are using their prayers to bring, to bring forth your purpose and plan in the earth in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that they will walk in the strength of the Lord, declaring that God is my shield in my buckler. He's my strong defense. He's my joy and he's my peace today. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, they would declare that I am covered in the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. I've overcome all the works of the enemy because God is with me. I pray your grace upon them, Father. I pray the wisdom of God be with them. In the name of Jesus, I declare they are the children of the Most High God. They are king's kids. They are royal priests to a holy people been called out of darkness, showing forth your praises, declaring your glory in the earth. In the name of Jesus, I give you all the praise and all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you and have a great day in Jesus' name.